What's up guys, Stan Lake here with Catch and Creation. We're in one of my favorite spots in the whole state, the Sand Hills of North Carolina. We're looking for animals like cottonmouths and different kinds of frogs. This region is more biodiverse than any other region in our state. There's so many things here that are worth the drive uh, from our house, which is about a three hour drive. So come on this adventure with me, let's go find some cool stuff. See, although the, the cottonmouth is an ambush predator, it relies exclusively often on its camouflage as its first line of defense. If it can stay still enough and a predator like it would consider me walks right past it, then it's won the battle for that day, so to speak. Like it's not gonna get preyed upon or harassed if it can just stay still. Now they're not gonna come attack you like a lot of people will say. But when they do, they got switchblades. My heart is pounding because Daniel just probably saved me from making a mistake. See, I was going after a little anole lizard and Daniel said, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a cottonmouth right there where I was going after that lizard. And who knows, the cottonmouth may very well have been watching that same lizard too and he didn't see me. So we're gonna walk down there and try to coax her out so we can talk about her. Very docile. We're gonna move her out here so that we can have a little bit easier time talking about her. But look at this beautiful snake. How could you kill such an amazing animal? It is such a gorgeous animal. Now we're not gonna harass her too much. Uh, we're gonna let her kind of on her way, but I just want to show you this amazing animal. And we've talked about it countless times in this same spot. I can't say that I've ever actually found one in that spot, which is why I wasn't being cautious, but that's my fault. Now, she did exactly what I said earlier. She relies on her camouflage. She just sat there and was quiet, was watching me, like a cute little puppy dog snake. <laughs> she was just watching me, not trying to attack me, not trying to bum rush me or chase me or do anything crazy like you see on Animal Planet and these other sensational shows. She's just an amazing animal waiting right at the base of a tree for maybe a rodent or maybe for an amphibian to come around so that she can take them and eat them. All right, do you see how she's like flicking her tongue? A lot of people say that's how they smell. And it's a part truth, but I want you at home. Take your tongue and go, bleh, 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 bleh. what do you smell? If you didn't brush your teeth this morning, it's probably what you're smelling. But you don't have the same organ that she has. She has what's called a Jacobson's organ. She's specifically designed with that organ where she flicks her tongue and she catches molecules on the air. And she sends those to that Jacobson's organ and it sends chemical signals to her brain that lets her know kind of what she's smelling, if it's dangerous, if it's food, which direction she should go in. Now these animals are also, like we've talked about before, some of the other uh, vipers in our area, which she is a pit viper. She has these heat seeking pits that help give her kind of like a thermal image of her surroundings so that she knows what's available and what she can eat or what she needs to get away from. She's just a gorgeous and amazing animal and I am so thankful that we found her. She's been such a cooperative and placid snake. Uh, I just honestly can't believe it. They're normally relatively good natured like this when I've seen them, uh, but not like this. She's just really chill. So we're going to let her go and just take her over here. We're done kind of messing with her. We don't want to stress her out. We really don't want to harass her. So we're going to take her over here. Put her back exactly where we found her. There you go. Go ahead. Oh, she's she's kind of liking my snake hook. Come on, girl. There we go. Stuck on some brambles. There we go. 
Now she's just gonna go back on her way and probably nestle right up against that tree where she was. Remember if you find stuff in the woods like this, you know, obviously this doesn't belong here, but wh whether you're flipping a piece of tin or a board, always put it back the way you found it or as close to the way you found it as possible because even though something might not be under it now, things actually do live under objects like this, especially rotting logs and, and rocks. You want to put them back where they came from because those are all little micro habitats that an animal could spend its whole life under and it could build its whole little world under there and you could destroy it in one careless flip. So always remember to try to do that because if you love animals like I love animals, and I'm sure you probably do, we want to keep seeing them hang around. We don't want to just destroy their habitats in our zeal to find them, right? I think you can agree with that. When you're out in the woods, you've got to dance. you got to dance real good and prance. We're doing the snake dance. The snakes are great and I like to dance and doing the snake prance. Ah, hello my darling, hello my baby, hello my ragtime gal. <laughs> Check him out dude. This is the craziest snaky looking stick I've ever found. <laughs> Alright so we've shifted gears in our tactics for finding animals. We were looking in the woods, now we're doing what's called road cruising. And that means we're just basically traveling old back roads at night, waiting for reptiles and amphibians to cross the roads. In the summertime, because it's so hot outside, it's beneficial for these animals to burrow down and hunker down during the day. And then at night, when the temperatures drop, they come out and forage. So we're hoping that we can find some animals and capitalize on this, seeing them cross the roads on these untraveled roads at night. So let's see what else we can find. Look at my little toad friend. Remember kids, the toads roll the roads. <laughs> this guy was just sitting in the middle of the sandy road, just chilling. He's got the biggest head I've ever seen on a toad <laughs> in comparison to his body. But he's really pretty. We're gonna let him hop on his way. Oh yes. <laughs> We'll turn my light off so I don't blind you. But check this little beautiful snake out. This is a little baby corn snake, a hatchling corn snake. He must have just hatched uh, sometime maybe a week or so ago. So he is really small, but he's out probably cruising for food tonight. Now when they're small like this, they'll actually eat small mammals like pinky mice. Sometimes you can even get them to eat uh, some types of insects and sometimes small amphibians or even lizards at this size. Now when they're a full grown adult, the corn snake, as its other name is, the red rat snake, primarily feeds on rodents. Uh, and they love to eat rats, they can climb trees, and sometimes they'll even eat birds. But this little guy, he's got a long road ahead of him because he's a baby, and being so small like this, he's actually on the menu for a lot of other animals. So I hope that he finds his way and that he can find a good meal tonight and find a good place to hide before tomorrow so nobody eats him. What a great find. Ah! Man, this breaks my heart, dude. You know what this is? This is a timber rattlesnake and not an old one. Maybe a, maybe a two year old that somebody has ran over. This guy has only, not only been ran over, it looks like he's been backed over a couple times. It's malicious. These guys are in decline, not only because of habitat loss, but because of crap like this where people just don't care about them. Now there's a, there's a thing called charismatic species syndrome where it's okay and easy for us to want to save cute and cuddly things like pandas and other things like that that we can attribute human value to. But stuff like this timber rattlesnake that's beneficial, that's a valuable, valuable part of an ecosystem, for whatever reason, because it's venomous and creepy crawly, we can't wrap our brains around wanting to save something like this. 
but it is just as important as every other thing. And this animal, by taking it out of its ecosystem, and ultimately if they decline enough to where they go extinct or their numbers are drastically affected, it can affect so many other things in, an, in a habitat, in an ecosystem. These guys control rodents. They do a wonderful job controlling rodents. And as you know, rodents carry disease, they carry all kinds of things. And so these guys are the checks and balance in the woods for those things. It just breaks my heart. This guy's, again, just a young timber rattlesnake. It takes them sometimes up to 10 years to reach sexual maturity. So if we kill these guys off, it would take this guy another six to 10 years to become sexually mature. It's just a sad thing to see. We're gonna move him off the road so that no one else runs him over and does him any more damage even though he's already dead. Man, I hate that. All right, guys, you've been watching Catching Creation. My name's Stan Lake. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Until next time, remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share it with your friends because what's an adventure unless you can tell somebody else about it? So come be a part of the adventure with us and be a part of our team by subscribing and doing all these things and keep up to date with what's going on in all things Catching Creation. Until next time, Stan Lake signing off. Whoop. Thanks for watching this installment of Catching Creation. If you just can't get enough of these adventures, I encourage you to go to catchingcreation.com backslash store and you can see all the other stuff that we've filmed, the children's books and devotional books that I've written and all other things that will help encourage you not only in your walk but that you can give to other people to encourage them. And as always, please feel free to be a part of our adventure. Share us on Twitter, share our adventures on Facebook, Subscribe to the newsletter and the blog and stay up to date with all that's going on with Catching Creation. Until next time, I'll see you later.